Welcome to the Organic Chemistry Laboratories. Laboratory courses are intended to introduce you to the techniques which are used to make the experimental observations and the measurements from which it is possible to make inferences and deductions about organic chemistry. In the design of the laboratory curriculum, we have kept in mind certain basic considerations. The first is that since working with any chemicals presents hazards, the procedures have been selected to be capable of being done safely with the equipment that we have. However, as in daily life, Materials which are widely used safely can become dangerous if they are misused. It is our first concern, therefore, to adopt safe work habits, to know the properties of materials with which we work, and to learn to identify sources of potential danger, whether inherent in the particular materials or resulting from the way the materials are utilized. It is impossible to do experimental chemistry without using hazardous materials, but it is readily possible to work with complete safety with hazardous materials by using appropriate techniques and protective measures. Second, the laboratory is intended to support the lecture and vice versa in order to provide a more complete learning experience than either one alone affords. The laboratory is intended to lag in its pace slightly behind the lecture, but to be close to the same place except in the very beginning when basic techniques which will be used over and over again will be learned. Third, the laboratory is intended to be interesting. It's not a place to which you have been sentenced for six hours a week but a place which is pr provided where you can learn by hands-on experience. It can even be fun if you let it. Undue haste in performing the experiments defeats the whole purpose, prevents you from taking advantage of the learning possibilities, and worst of all, leads to unsafe work habits. Your activities in the laboratory should emphasize the labor part of the domain and not the oratory part. The laboratory is not a social arena, and please practice your interpersonal skills elsewhere. Above all, be warned that horseplay in the laboratory constitutes grounds for immediate dismissal from the course. Among the important precautions that we take to avoid injury is the use of protective clothing and equipment. Probably the most important part of your body to be protected, which needs to be protected, is your eyes. And for that purpose, we require the wearing of goggles at all times in the laboratory when anyone is doing any experimental work at all. You may leave your goggles off only during those portions of the laboratory period when lectures or examinations or other such activities are taking place. When anyone is working, even cleaning up and washing glassware, the goggles must be worn. Goggles which have a rim which seals the entire area around the eyes from any uh, materials which would get in contact with them. Contact lenses are sources of irritation even under circumstances such that no liquid is splashed into the eye. And under uh, direction from our legal counsel to the university, we are required that to require you not to wear contact lenses in the laboratory. Now, please, if you require visual correction, wear spectacles. And again, if you are found wearing contact lenses, 
you will be asked to leave the laboratory that day, and if you persist in wearing them into the laboratory after you have been asked not to, you not only uh, incur the responsibility of wearing them, but if you are caught repeatedly doing that, you will be dismissed from the course. The University Safety Committee has decided that laboratory coats must be worn in all of the laboratories, and that requirement it has been placed for all laboratory courses. If you have a lab coat which you wish to use, that's fine. If you do not have a lab coat, I recommend that these Tyvek plastic ones, which are inexpensive and which meet the requirements of the laboratory and are available at small cost from the stockroom. It is a great deal less expensive to wear such protective clothing than it is to replace clothing which has been damaged accidentally in the course of an experiment. Please note that open-toed shoes or sandals are not allowed in the laboratory for the obvious reason that the feet are easily damaged and, of course, you must wear shoes of some kind in the laboratory. Now, gloves of different kinds are also available. You may bring a pair of gloves which you buy at the grocery store or you may buy a similar pair of gloves from the stock room or a pair of these disposable latex gloves. These will last for a few lab periods if they are taken care of and <clears throat> then can be thrown away. They are also less expensive than the more durable ones. Now, if you are careful, Gloves are not required for quite a number, if not the majority of the reactions, uh, the experiments in the laboratories. And you do not have to wear gloves except when you are handling materials which are uh, capable of damaging the skin. However, if you wish to wear them all the time, that's all right to do, except that we take a very dim view of wearing gloves outside the laboratory. If you wear them outside the laboratory, you are likely to touch a surface which someone else touches with his or her bare hands. And if your gloves are contaminated with material which is irritating to the skin, then that is easily transferred to somebody else's bare hands from the surface which everybody touches. So it is a, an offense subject to a penalty in the grade to be found wearing gloves outside the laboratory and repetition of that offense subjects you to increasingly stiff penalties. Please take your gloves off before you leave the laboratory, even if you're only going to the stockroom for a second to get something from the stockroom. Now, in the event that a mishap occurs, in spite of the precautions that we take to avoid them, it's important to know what to do. In the first place, any injury, regardless of how minor it appears, must be reported immediately to the instructor and to the stockroom. We have a legal obligation to you to secure appropriate treatment for any injuries that you may sustain. And in order to fulfill our obligation, it's necessary, if an injury occurs, to send you to the infirmary. Please do not attempt to circumvent that. It is to your advantage to allow that to be taken care of. But please know that if we insist on your being taken to the infirmary, it is because we have a legal obligation to do so, and we will insist that you go 
regardless of how trivial or minor the injury appears to be on the surface. Now, let's take a look at some of the equipment which is available for use in emergencies in the laboratory and also some equipment which we will be using on a daily basis in performing the experiments which we perform in our uh, laboratory course. If you wear your safety goggles at all times when you are supposed to be wearing them, there should be no reason for you to get anything into your eyes at all. But in the event that an accident occurs in which something gets into your eyes, go immediately to the nearest eye fountain or ask somebody uh, next to you to take you to the nearest eye fountain and as quickly as possible start washing your eyes under the eye fountain. Washing should be continued for at least 10 minutes. You will notice in several of these tapes that I have violated my own precept to wear safety goggles at all times that experimental work is being done in the laboratories. The reason for that is that these tapes are being shot in the middle of the summer when it is very hot and it's necessary to turn off the air conditioning in order to reduce the noise level. And under those circumstances, my spectacles fog up in a very short time so this is one of those situations in which you are required to do as I say and not as I do. I am aware of the necessity for wearing goggles to protect my eyes and you must be as well. I have moved to the safety shower station which is in the aisle of each lab closest to the exit door. Notice that there is also a, an exit door at the rear of each laboratory in one in a different uh, corner in each laboratory. And be aware, please, of the exit doors both at the front of the laboratory to the hall and at the rear into the next laboratory so that you can get out of the laboratory quickly in the event there is a need to do so. The safety shower is to be used in the event you get a, a spill of some sort of chemicals on your skin or clothing which you cannot wash off quickly at the laboratory sink or in the event that your clothing catches fire and cannot be extinguished rapidly by patting it out. In either of those events, move or ask your uh, neighbor to help you to move under the safety shower and activate the shower by pulling the chain. On being activated, the shower releases a drenching flow of water and I do not want to uh, have that kind of shower at the moment as hot as it is, so I will simply say that this chain can be pulled to release the shower. Because of our use of the flameless heaters and because of our constant awareness of safety, fires are very unusual in the organic laboratories. However, in the event that a fire should begin, everyone in the immediate vicinity should move away 
into the hall as rapidly as possible and the instructor or one or more designated other persons should use the fire extinguishers in the attempt to contain the fire. Fire extinguishers are located in each lab on the end of the bench next to the eye fountain and inside the door to the hall. To use the fire extinguisher, remove the fire extinguisher from its bracket, withdraw the safety pin which holds the um, <coughs> valve and prevents it from being activated, bring the nozzle up, aim the nozzle at the base of the fire. Our imaginary fire is this box of Kim wipes here. Squeeze the, the nozzle, squeeze the handle. Fires out. In the event of a spill of a hazardous material, something that unfortunately happens far more commonly than fires do, procure the spill cleanup kit from the uh, desk next to the door, remove the bag of adsorbent, it's called spill tamer adsorbent, sprinkle it in sufficient quantity onto the material which has been spilled to absorb it, and secure from the stock room a container in which the adsorbent with the adsorbed <coughs> material that has been spilled can be placed for proper disposal. Do not sop up acids in particular or organic solvents either in paper towels and throw them into the ordinary waste. Use the proper absorbent and dispose of them in the manner that you will be instructed to by the stockroom personnel. Various kinds of wastes are generated in the laboratories, and these different kinds of wastes must be sorted in order that they may be disposed of properly chemical wastes of a hazardous nature are properly deposited in containers that are kept in the hoods which are clearly labeled with each particular kind of waste kept separate from the other. Paper waste and similar uh, non-hazardous materials may be deposited in the waste cans, which are available at several different stations in the laboratory. Please place nothing in the laboratory sinks or the troughs in the middle of the desks except water. Put all waste materials into uh, proper containers. Now, glass materials should be separated and segregated from uh, other wastes and placed in the blue barrels which are located inside the doors into the hall of the laboratories and clearly labeled for glass waste and the station indicated by the designation on the wall. Next to the entrance door from the hall in each laboratory is a station at which there are materials for uh, absorbing spills, absorbing spills, and the, uh, one of the carbon dioxide fire extinguishers, and a bottle of a eye solution, which is just simply a saline solution, which can be used to soothe the eyes after a material has been washed out at the eye fountain. Do not use that material until a thorough 
washing of the eyes has been accomplished at the eye fountain in the event it is necessary to remove something from the eyes. Now, in the event that a fire occurs in the laboratory, the uh, first thing to do is for everybody to get safely away from it, and that can be done, of course, by exiting the laboratory either by the forward door or the rear door. In the event that a fire alarm sounds indicating that a fire is occurring at some other point in the building, you will hear a very loud alarm bell, and when that happens, assume that there is indeed a fire and exit the building as promptly as you can, stopping only to turn off any electrical equipment or any plumbing which you have operating at the time. Do not return to the laboratory until someone has told you that it is appropriate to do so if you are required to exit in the event of an emergency. If a total power failure occurs in the building, as sometimes happens, an emergency generator is supposed to start working within a second or two to supply power to a few selected circuits, including some lighting circuits in each laboratory. That system has been known to fail, although it is checked frequently. And in the event that that happens, the laboratories may be totally without power. If that happens, stay in the laboratory, turning off such equipment as you can until someone comes from the stockroom with a flashlight and to assist you in turning off the remaining equipment and leaving the building. In that event, also, stay out of the building until you have been told that it is safe to return. Many inorganic reagents are utilized in organic chemistry for different purposes. Many of these are concentrated acids or ammonium hydroxide. And in order that they can be identified quickly and that one can be aware of the hazards associated with each one, they are ordinarily identified by color throughout uh, using a, a code which is standard throughout both industry and academic laboratories. Sulfuric acid is identified by yellow, hydrochloric acid by blue, nitric by red, acetic acid by brown, phosphoric acid by white, ammonium hydroxide green, and a variety of reagents otherwise unrelated in structure or chemistry, but which have a high vapor pressure, that is, they're quite volatile, and the vapors of which are quite toxic, are identified by orange caps. Bromine, acetaldehyde, and benzoyl chloride, which are not related in any other way, all are very volatile and have very toxic vapors. Such reagents should be utilized only in the hood, and indeed the others of these are commonly kept in the hood and utilized there. Since I'm going to demonstrate how to pour properly from one of these bottles, I'm going to put my goggles on so that my eyes are properly protected while I am handling the chemicals. I'm going to pour some ammonium hydroxide into the graduated cylinder from the concentrated ammonium hydroxide bottle. Notice that the stoppers of the bottles, for the most part, are <coughs> um, so-called 
flathead ones which can be grasped between the index finger and the middle finger of one hand. The stopper is removed and the bottle is picked up with the same hand that grasps the stopper. The liquid is carefully poured to the desired volume in the graduated cylinder. Any drip is removed from the lip and the bottle is set back into the saucer from which it was taken so that in the event that there is any drip, it falls into the saucer and the stopper is again replaced. Notice that the stopper has not contacted anything other than the neck of the bottle during the whole operation. If the bottle is one which does not have a stopper which can be grasp, grasped easily in one hand, and even one of these can, then the approved technique is to lay the stopper on the bench on its top. Do not ever put a stopper down on the bench with the wet side in contact with the bench surface. In the event that <clears throat> you have dripped and know that the bottle needs to be washed off, pick up both the saucer and the bottle, carry it to the nearest sink, rinse it off, dry the outside with a paper towel, and bring it back to the hood. <clears throat>